Hi, I'm Sarish Sudakran and in this video, I'll share 10 of my favorite edits, the ones that have influenced me the most. An edit can be a simple cut or a sequence of shots that form part of a montage. What I don't mean is the entire editing of a movie. The fact is, every good movie must have good editing. So it's not a rare thing, but a great edit must first get four things right. The preceding shot must end at the right moment. The succeeding shot should begin at the right moment. The transition in between, which could be a cut, dissolve, or any other transition, must be the best bridge between the two. That's what I think an edit is, a bridge from one world to another, taking us across space and time. The edit must also work in the context of the entire movie and cannot be a gimmick. What's an example of a gimmick? The famous cut in Lawrence of Arabia. I call it the showbiz cut. I'll explain later. A great edit must also be memorable. You can't imagine the movie without the edit or sequence. Major spoilers ahead, so please watch the movies first. The list is in the description. This is my top 10. Number 10. The Final Fight in Raging Bull. It's my favorite Scorsese movie. There were many instances in this movie where I was taken out of the movie universe due to the overuse of style, but this sequence isn't one of them, though ironically it's the most stylistic of them all. Scorsese used editing to raise these characters to mythical heights. He did this by stopping time and focusing on the small details. He puts a microscope to this moment in history and we are forced to scrutinize it in detail. Every punch is like a slap on the face. Number 9. The Kurosawa Wipe in Seven Samurai The wipe is one of the most pretentious of transitions, you can't hide it. Yet, if there ever was a man who owned the wipe, it was Kurosawa. The wipes in Seven Samurai show us why it exists in the first place. It generates energy and rhythm with the right kinds of shots. You can see how the preceding and succeeding shot really decides the bridge. Could he have used a cut? Sure, but he used a wipe, and we remember him for it. Number 8. The Odessa Steps in Battleship Potemkin When I first sat down to watch this movie, I was expecting to get bored. It would be the rare filmmaker who grew up on Eisenstein's work. You have to be introduced to it like fine wine. You can't find an editing textbook worth anything that does not mention the sequence. It shows you how to construct suspense through the sheer juxtaposition of shots. By doing this, you can stretch time, a technique we have seen a million times since. Guess what? This one still works. Number 7. Breathless, the jump cut. They tell you to watch your continuity so you don't have jump cuts. Everyone thought this was the law until Jean-Luc Godard showed us it didn't matter. I don't like jump cuts for aesthetic reasons. I like them because it reminds me to not care about the rules so much. Number 6. A tie between Requiem for a Dream and Don't Look Now. The climax of Requiem for a Dream is one of the most breathtaking montages ever put together. Add music to it and it becomes a tour de force. There's such a rapid succession of cuts but you can follow everything. You cannot take your eyes away, even if what is happening on screen is painful to watch. The explicit lovemaking scene in Don't Look Now is another one of my favorite montages. It fractures time in a sublime way, and until this point in the movie, nothing prepares you for the sequence. So in a way, the rest of the movie is somewhat of a disappointment after this. Number 5. Citizen Kane, The Breakfast Scene I could probably make a top 10 list just from Citizen Kane, but The Breakfast Scene is one of the most delightful exchanges that combine a swish pan cut and dissolve to show the passage of time and the change of priorities of a newly wed couple. Number 4. Nosferatu, The Dissolve My favorite dissolve ever. Even after almost a century, the slow appearance of Orlok gives you the chills. The greatest vampire movie ever made. Number 3. The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, The Climax the three-way gunfight in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly shows us how you can mathematically mesmerize with editing and elevate it to a fine art. Kurosawa did many similar variants, but this sequence is something else. One of the most exhilarating cinematic experiences ever put together. Number 2. Psycho, The Shower Scene 
I was blown away when I saw the shower scene. It's another one of those eye openers where you learn you don't need to show anything to show everything. You can use edits to create imaginary images in the audience's mind. Genius. Before I go to number one, let's revisit Lawrence of Arabia. Peter O'Toole holds up a matchstick and blows, and you know instinctively from the angle of the shot that something is coming. And when it comes, it takes your breath away. But that's it. The extinguishing of a matchstick cut to a burning landscape is a visually thrilling cut. However, it's not a thematically or metaphorically consistent cut. What's an extinguishing matchstick supposed to signify anyway, other than be a gimmick? How does it relate to the desert? How does it relate in any way with whatever has come before? I can't think of a good enough reason. Take it from me. For ordinary men, it's a burning, fiery furnace. No, Dryden. It's going to be fun. This line is more powerful, because it's going to be anything but fun for Lawrence. The biggest problem is this cut could work for any movie, and has been used many times since. You could even take it out and it wouldn't make a difference to the film. Number 1, 2001, A Space Odyssey. The Cut. 2001 came a few years later, so it could be argued that Kubrick was inspired by Lawrence of Arabia. Except, Kubrick got it right. You don't anticipate anything. A primate throws a bone in the air, and what the? The preceding shot stops at the right moment. The succeeding shot matches it. And the transition is the simplest ever. The humble cut. Yet, it bridges centuries and light years in one breathtaking cut that fills an entire movie in your head in the space of one frame. You see all the advances man has made, your own life, and the way to the future. And to distinguish it from the matchstick gimmick, the bone draws from whatever has happened before it, and the weapon portends everything that comes after. After all these years, I can't imagine a better bridge, and I can't imagine this movie without this cut. If you take it out, you will miss the entire experience from past to future within the span of that cut. There is no better single edit in the history of filmmaking. I know there have been some conflicting views held by some of you. Do you agree? What are your favorite edits? If you like this video, hit the like button. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Bye now.